Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley from Inclips and welcome to another live stream. It has been a while since I've even been in my craft room. Um, so I'm super excited to join you all tonight and get chatting with you all again. If you have never seen a live stream by me, everything here is off to the side. So I have all the controls. I can see all of your comments and you guys joining. Um, so I will be looking over here throughout the stream to see all of your comments and interact with you all which is really awesome. So I'll wait for a couple of you guys to join in here and kind of, we can kind of interact a little bit. Now tonight I'm going to be doing some gel plate printing using some acrylic paints and I'll also be using some of my new release. So um, I was just at Ranger headquarters last weekend and we did some really awesome stuff. I taught my class there. It was a weekend workshop. It was so much fun. We got a tour of the warehouse and factory, and then we spent two days together kind of sitting and crafting with those people who were able to attend. So that was tons of fun. It was really awesome because I've never taught a class for that long. So it was really cool to do that. Hey everybody, lots of comments, lots of people joining in. Hey everyone, thank you for joining me tonight. Um, this is gonna be awesome. So yeah, so um, we taught that class this weekend, me and my mom did, it was tons of fun. And we worked with Ranger a little bit on some upcoming releases as well, which is so much fun. And I actually did my release live at Ranger. So my last video that I did was also a live stream, or actually, I don't think it was. I did a live stream on their Facebook page. Um, the last video that I did was just at Ranger headquarters and it was with my new release. Okay, awesome. So I'm gonna flip my camera down and we are going to um, do an overhead shot so we can kind of do a review of what we released the other day. So here is the stamp set that we released. This is a six by nine stamp set. So yes, it's one inch bigger than six by eight. We love to do um, the bigger stamp sets to give you guys a really great value for the money that you're paying for it. So this one is called Surf's Up, and again, it has interchangeable bodies, as well as the two different heads and some really fun images in here. And everything that I use will be linked down below in the description box, so you can go shopping down there in case if you're interested in anything. And those links help support me. Those are affiliate links, which is really awesome. Hey everyone joining, thank you so much for stopping by. From France, it's 4 a.m. there, oh my gosh. That's awesome, thank you for joining. Um, so this one is super awesome. I'm gonna show you how to use this with other sets um, because we really like to make things versatile in here. So this one is the Dudes 2 stamp set and I'll show you later how you can interchange even the girls head on their bodies or you can use the different heads in this set that come from here. So they're really interchangeable. We like to make sure that when you buy a set, it doesn't go extinct, it doesn't go out of style. You can still use it with anything that we come out with in the future, which is awesome. You know what, it could be a basketball. This one's actually a beach ball, but I definitely, you could probably make that into a basketball too if you want to. Awesome, so that's the Surf's Up stamp set that we're gonna be using today. And we're also going to be using this background stamp. Now, one thing that's really cool that we've been doing with our background stamps is I had this idea with the Music Note background stamp at first, and now we've carried it over into this one as well. So this one's called Wild Waves, and I hand drew all of these waves, which is really cool, really tons of fun. And the cool part about this is they're separated. So this one is also cut and you're able to peel it apart. So you can either use one wave at a time if you want to, you can use this kind of bottom one. I love this one because it looks like a shoreline at the bottom too because it's half of that wave. Um, or you can use them all together. So it just gives you a little bit more versatility. And again, it fits together like a puzzle piece, which is so nice um, when you're using these stamps. Oh, that's so awesome. You're watching from your hotel room. That is so cool. So yeah, this has been tons of fun using this as well. And I'll use this as I'm doing some prints on my gel plate. Now, whenever I go live, I always do gel plates pretty often. I find that it's just a super fun thing to do and kind of relax and chat. Also, you guys can recommend different things that we do in today's stream. So be sure to kind of interact, ask questions when you want to. If you've never used a gel plate, I have links again down below to them, um, but they are so much fun and super versatile as well. So let's get into it. So I'm going to be using these gel plates. Now I always bring this on screen and it's kind of a big glare, but this is the storage tin that they come in, or you can actually purchase this separately, sorry, but it's a really great storage for them. And then here are my gel plates. Now they usually come like really nice and clear, like this one, this one's even a little bit yellow, but I've been using these a ton. Mine is kind of full of paint, but that's not gonna affect how it works. It's still gonna give great prints. 
Um, so let's get started with this. So I'm going to use this bigger um, plate here for this first one. You thought you were the only one watching in your hotel room. That's funny. Okay, so I like to keep the bottom piece of plastic on here so I can move this around and pick it up as I'm working. It's really just nice to have that. Um, also, if you guys want to, be sure to share the video tonight. That would be really awesome. So share it um, on Facebook or Twitter, whatever you want to, to kind of get some more people if you think they'd be interested in this um, live stream, which is so awesome. So I'm going to bring in a brayer. You're going to need a brayer for this project. So I'm going to use one of these Ranger brayers. Now these are really nice because they have this little stop here. So you're able to kind of set it on your desk and not get paint all over your desk. Oh, you're new to gel plates. That's so awesome. Where do I get my gel plate holder? I have links down below in the description box. Um, you can get it at Ranger. Awesome. So let's get started. I'm going to start off with um, some Dina Wakely paints. I use these every single time. They're a really thick medium and they're not going to bubble up on here, which I really like. So let's go in with some Peacock. Let's bring in a little bit of Tangerine. And then I'll go in with, let's do a little bit of Lemon. And I'll also bring in a little bit of Fuchsia and some lighter color as well. And you guys will see what I'm doing here in just a second. So I'm going to add a little bit a paint. And the cool part about the gel plate, which I really like, is if you're into doing painted backgrounds, a little bit goes a long way. So you're really able to spread out lots of color on here and make that little bit of paint last for kind of the whole project, which I think is really cool. So now I'll go in with some of the yellows. We're going to create kind of a shoreline um, with a sunset in the background, which I think is so much fun. And then we're going to use it um, for our background today. So I'm just going to go in Right, I love these colors too. Diane, I mean, Dina has some really great colors in the line of her paints. And I love that they're that really thick paint as well because they do great on here. I use them every single time. So let's go in here and I'm just going to spread my paint out. And the way that I do this is um, sometimes I see people go back and forth like this. You don't want that because you'll get weird little marks in there. I go all the way across and it just spreads the paint out really nice and evenly on your gel plate. So once I'm done with this, I'm going to, let me grab a little bit of paper towel. Just give me one second. So I just grabbed a couple pieces of paper towel. I use this while I'm doing gel printing just so that I can kind of, if I want to roll off a little bit of that excess color so that it doesn't all blend together. And then look, that top is going to be that really cool purple shade, which I just love. So perfect. So now we have that really cool kind of sunset there. You saw beautiful sunsets and sunrises on Madeline Island. That's awesome. Okay. So I'm just going to take, this is a piece of my stark white cardstock. And whenever I bring this to classes, I want to just let you guys know, if you want to try this cardstock out, I really recommend it. It's my favorite that I've tested. I tested like 50 card stocks before I got to this one. And it's like nothing else that I've used before. I know that, you know, people might just think that it's just a white card stock, but even everybody at um, Rangers class this weekend was so amazed by it. Um, so here is my print. This is so cool. I think it looks really awesome. And on camera, it might look a little bit less blended than it does in person, but I just love the texture and things like that, that the gel plate kind of offers and gives. So let me just tried brayering a little spot there. There was a little bit where paint was missing. So I'll just grab a little paint on my finger and kind of fill it in. So no big deal there. And I just kind of let my brayer dry like this. I, I um, roll it off a couple times and then I just let it dry like this. And it's not going to affect anything when you are doing your prints. So what I usually do is I know a lot of people would go in here and print it another million times. And a lot of people get mad at me for doing this, but I'm just going to pull the rest off with a paper towel. It's just a thin layer of paint. It's not like we're wasting a lot of product. And the reason why I do that is just because I know myself. And let's be real, if you're not going to use the background, don't make it. So I know I'm not going to use any extra backgrounds. So I just kind of stick to just wiping that off, which is kind of a good tip. You know, if you're not going to use it, don't keep creating. If, of course, if you're working in a journal, you can always bring this onto another page and then get that page started. But for just cards, I tend to not use every background that I make. So. I don't want to waste cardstock and, and things like that. I'd rather waste a little tiny bit of paint. So 
That is really awesome. My mom's in here tonight, so say hi to her as well. She just joined in. Okay. Nope, I don't remove the paint from the brayer. Now, it's not really a thick layer. Like, it's almost dry already. Now, the reason why I don't remove it from here is, well, it doesn't really affect the next print that you do. So, once this is dry, it's not going to lift off any color of that. Um, it's not really going to scrape off either since it's such a thin layer. If you have a thick layer of paint on here, definitely get that off. And I do roll it on the brayer a couple times, but you don't need to clean this a ton. So... I love this background. Let's maybe go in with another one and share how to do some patterns and textures. And then after that, I'll go into kind of stamping on top of them and really using the backgrounds and cards. Because I find that some people just share how to do the backgrounds and don't share how to finish them off with cards. So let's go in here. Let's do a second background. Okay, now for this one, I'm going to go in with, let's do a little bit of a darker color. I love doing this and you'll see why in just a second. So I'm going to put this color all over. Okay, is everybody, is everybody stream okay? I saw mine buffering on my screen just a little bit, so I wanna make sure it's not doing that for you guys too. So I'm just gonna go in here and I'm going to roll this paint over top. I might've used just a little bit too much for this one. Okay, so I'll spread that over to a thin layer of paint there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create some textures and patterns as well. Okay, so let me go in here. I'm gonna get up again. This is my bubble wrap. I've used this a couple times on these already, but I just go in with a couple random things like this that create some really cool textures. So it'll just lift off a little bit of that paint on there, which I think is so cool. Then I'll go in with some smaller bubbles. So keep your, keep your um, packaging, because it does, it helps to create some things like this. And this just removes some paint, which is really cool. And then I'll go in even with, you can use a little bit of paper towel. Sometimes that creates a really cool pattern in there. So just kind of play around with it. And how you kind of press it down will give patterns as well. So you can see now we can kind of see through that in some areas. It got rid of some of that paint on there, which is exactly what we wanted. And then I'll take my piece of cardstock. Just going to press it into that. So look at that, once you lift it off, you can see all that really fun and awesome texture in there. So this I'll use for another wave, I think. I think that'll be a really good one. Now let me set that off to the side. We're gonna do one more, I think. Actually, I don't know if I can really promise that, but. <laughs> We'll do a few more backgrounds, I think, before we move into making them into some cards. Or at least I'll start the cards. I don't know if everything will be finished on camera today because I don't love to go for too long. Awesome, so how is everybody's night? Yeah, this, this turns out so cool, am I right? Just with packaging, right? It looks so awesome and you get all that really cool texture in there. Everybody's loving this one. So what I think is so cool about using packaging is you don't have to buy anything for this. Of course, I'll show you in this next one how to get a little bit more use out of your stamps and stencils and stuff, but really you don't have to buy anything. You can just use packaging and different cool things like that. And then the, the one thing I tell people in classes too is this is how you know that you use the right amount of paint. When you pick your, um, when you pick your piece off and it's basically already dried to the touch. That's how you know. This one is already dry. So you can see we're using just the tiniest bit of paint. It's a really thin layer. That's why it's able to pull off um, just by those bubble wrap because it's just taking off that top layer. Yep, I'm using the gel plate. So if you are interested in this after you're seeing it, all the links will be down below where you guys can go shopping for any of the supplies you saw in today's video. Awesome, so let's move on into the wave background stamp because this one is so much fun and I think it's gonna be cool to use with the gel plate. So let's go in here. I'm going to, let me grab a couple different colors. When I do waves and things like that, um, whenever I do water, and I know a lot of my viewers already know this, is whenever I do water, I do greens and blues because it makes it a little bit more interesting than just adding blues into the background.
Well, that's an awesome question. Sports stamps. I'll definitely think about that. We talked about that a little bit. Um, so that might be coming in the future, definitely. I think it would be really cool because we already are kind of going on those masculine kind of stamps with the dudes too. So, awesome question. Maybe, wink, wink. <laughs> I'm not sure yet. Um, so let's go in here and I'm going to just brayer that out. And I think the really cool part about this is you can leave it just like this. I think that looks so cool. Hey, Courtney. She's part of my design team. She is really talented. She does some like amazing coloring with all the stamps. So check out her channel as well. So I'm just gonna go in here. We'll brayer that over top. And then I'm going to go in on just my paper towel off to the side. I always say in people in class too, here's your decorated napkin. <laughs> you just created your own napkin that you can use at your next party. Um, so then here we go. I'm going to take my wave stamp and I'm just going to press it into here, give it a little bit of wiggle. That's gonna pull off just a little bit of that paint. And then there we go. Then we have this really cool background that we can pull. I can already tell it's gonna look awesome. I can already tell. So I'm just gonna go in here, place that at the bottom. Then we'll give a good run around with my finger. I go pretty light because you just want it to touch it. You don't want to leave that on for too long because um, sometimes it can dry to it. And look at that. So there you get the subtle pattern of waves, but if you want a really cool wave background too, I do this before it dries, before it um, starts drying on here. I wanna go into my stamp. I'll bring this on here, and I'm just going to stamp that down. Awesome, so look at how cool that is. And you really can't achieve this with just um, ink or anything like that because this is like really gives that cool color variation. You could do something similar with ink, but I think with the paint, it does a really cool job and it's a two for one too, which is so cool. So look at these fun backgrounds on here. I just love it. Awesome, so I think maybe we'll be done now with our backgrounds for the night and now I'm going to share how to turn them into cards. And one other thing that I wanted to mention, there's this Rub It Scrub It pad from Ranger. I haven't really talked about this, I forgot to link it down, but check it out, just go to rangerinc.com and also I wanted to let you guys know on anything, you can use code SIMON20 at rangerinc.com for 20% off, which is really great. And I just go in here and I scrub this surface. Especially if you have any dried paint on there, it'll pull that dried paint right off too, which I just love. So, you know, it might not be the best for wet mediums, like if the paint is still wet, but once it starts drying on there, this is a really great way to get it off. Now I'm gonna go in with my, my gross rag. I like this better than paper towel because it doesn't like peel all over my stamp, which is really great, so. I'm just gonna go in here and yeah, probably only use that rub it, scrub it when everything is dry in there because now it just went all into those details of the stamp. So it just made it worse. But if paint is dry on a stamp or a stencil, go in with that and it's gonna rough it up a little bit. So even after this, if anything is dry in there, I'll just go in with that rub it, scrub it and kind of scrub it off a little bit. Or you could put this underneath the sink and easily clean it out. Just avoid getting any water into that cling foam. But since we're on live, we're gonna ignore that. Um, it's not super hard. It's actually easier to get the paint off the stamp when you just, you know, use a little cloth um, and really just spray the cloth. That'll help it. Um, but I, I recommend doing it right away. Yeah, don't add too much extra water to the stamp because then it'll go down into the into the crevices of the stamp. But I'll be able to clean that out afterwards, hopefully. Um, but if, if you were just doing it, just wipe it off the top of the stamp. Yep, awesome. So I'm gonna put that back into the package there, into my little storage, and then we can start working on our cards. So here are the backgrounds that we have. We have the wave backgrounds that we created. We have this really fun kind of bubble wrap textured one. And then we also have this really cool sunset background, which I think is so awesome. 
Okay, so let's go in here. Let's start off with this sunset. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to grab my wave background stamp and I'm going to start off with this wave, I think. So the cool part about this is since these waves, you can separate them, I can just use one on my card by itself without having to do any masking, which is a total win, a total lifesaver. I really love the idea of that. If you ever talk to me in person, you know that I hate masking and don't ever want to do it. I don't like to mask my stamps. I don't like to mask my stencils. I like things to be quick and simple. So having a stamp that pulls apart like this, where you can only use one wave at a time without having to mask anything else off, is a lifesaver. So we're using this piece of the wave today. So let's go in here. I'm going to do some stamping onto there. Let's use some archival ink. Now, usually I would just stamp with my ink, but I want to make sure that this is going to stay put and stamping with archival is going to make sure of that. So let me go in here. Let me find an archival ink. Okay. So let's see, I have a couple. Okay, I think that's gonna be the best colors that we could use. So let me test them out. Let's see which one's gonna be better. So that one's a little bit of a lighter blue. This one is kind of a darker, more ocean blue. So we're gonna use this blue color. Awesome. So let me grab out a stamping block. This is one of the Tim Holtz stamping blocks. I like his because they're thin, but they're kind of huge, some of them. So you're able to really stamp a large image like this. Then I can just go in and stamp that down. So look how fun that is. It's just a super simple, it's one layer still. I wanted to keep it really simple, but look, you can make that wave on there and kind of keep that really cool blue color in the background and just have that wave on there. So you don't have to cut out a whole other wave on top. Of course you can if you want to, but I wanted to make sure that you could use one wave by itself and not have any problems with that without any masking, which is so cool. Right? I just love how that looks. And that archival is going to dry on there really nicely. If you use my inks, I think it still would work, but mine are always going to be water reactive. And I wanted to make sure this was going to be safe in case if we do anything with water on top. So I love how that looks as well. I think it is really cool. So let's go in with, if I clean off archival ink, I'm going to go on with a little bit of archival cleaner. It's a little on my desk here, so I'll go in and clean a little bit of that off. And then with stamps, I just kind of dab the archival cleaner all over the place. And then I'll just wipe off that blue ink on there. Perfect. So I'll set that off to the side. Um, we'll probably use that little wave again, but I think that is so cool. I'm glad you guys are loving that as much as I do as well. I think it's so awesome to have that on there. And then that sunset above it is just so beautiful. Now, another thing you can do too is if you want to get rid of a little bit of that white area that might be up there, you can always go in with some inks too. So we'll go in with a little bit of triple berry, which is my color of ink. And we'll just add a little bit of purple on here. So if you're not always 100% satisfied with your print or there's a little bit of white space that you didn't quite want, you can always go in here and intensify some of that color with some of my inks, which I think is really cool. So I'll go in with a little bit of triple berry for that top. I'll bring in a little bit of traffic cone for this orange color. And of course, they're not going to match perfectly, but it's just going to fill in some of that white space with the color that's similar. It's not going to match with... Dana's line, amazing, but it's going to do the job really nicely. I just love my colors in there. So we'll add a little bit of Slippery When Wet too. And I want to just make sure that this is all dry 
that archival ink on there. I want to make sure that's I never usually have a problem with the archival ink drying, but I always like to make sure that it's heat set, especially if I stamp on something like this, where it's stamping on top of the acrylic paint. I always like to make sure that we give it a good heat set before we go over top of it with anything like inks or anything like that. Perfect, so you already see how much that added. It just adds a little bit of color in there, which I think is so cool. Thank you, we have so much fun naming them always. They're always a blast to get those names in there. And I wanted it to be something where you use your inks and you smile every time you pull out the colors, which is awesome. So look at that. That is super cool and super fun. So now let's go in and I wanna show something with this background. So like I just shared, when you add that layer of paint down, I always like to leave some white space with textures. Okay. Hopefully it's not freezing up for you guys. It is a little bit on my end. So I wanted to make sure it's not doing it for you. Okay, so I'll go in with some of my colors here. Since I left that white space in there, I love that because I'm able to go in with my inks and do a little bit of blending. So here I'll go in with a little bit of Slippery When Wet. And you'll hear that kind of funny noise. Um, that is just it going over top of the acrylic paints. Because it almost acts as, the acrylic paint acts as kind of a resist, which is really awesome. So you're able to resist that on there and kind of wipe off so it's not going to dry on top of the acrylic paint or go over top of it, especially if you use a dark color like this. Okay, everybody's saying that it's buffering a little bit, but it's not lasting too long. Hmm. Okay, hopefully it's better now. I think it's still kind of freezing up here. I think it's still kind of freezing. So maybe I'll do a part two. Stay on here. I think 